It's time to mind your business with me, Jamila Lodge. Tune in to find out how to mind your business with BEDC, special guest entrepreneurs, industry experts, and more. Brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here. Welcome to Mind Your Business. Um, of course, you know me. I'm your host, Jamila Lodge, and I am so happy to have you here. We're going to be talking a little bit about your business idea, um, mobile biometric services, right? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, your full name, Patrice Madeira. She's the founder of this idea. And so before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. First, I want to thank Thank, thank BDC and yourselves and everybody in front of the scene and behind the scene. Um, I think I've been, during this process, the best kept secret. <laughs> so this is like my coming out event. Yes, I so, love it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, I, like you stated, I'm Patrice Medeiros. Um, I'm birthing um, a mobile biometric service. Okay. Um, a new and innovative um, mobile service that I'm hoping to introduce to Bermuda. Okay. Um, biometrics, I know it seems very scientific, mm -hmm. so I'll break it down to make it as easy and digestible for the masses. Um, bio basically is just like a living. Mm -hmm. Metrics is just a measurement. Okay. So what, we're, what I'm looking at doing is just providing a service that's um, mobile mm -hmm. in going out and measuring. And what I'm hoping to measure, my first um, layer of business would be doing fingerprints. Okay. All right. So I just, and fingerprints is not uncommon to the island. Well, I mean, with your phone, right? You Back we, in the, yes, so yes. we're doing it whether we realize it or not yes, anyway. Yes, yes. But my, my aspiration is um, with my background in, um, forensics mm -hmm. and law enforcement is now opening up the gates, educating and informing the general masses, the population on on the value of I mean, what fingerprints and facial recognition okay. can bring to individuals and businesses alike. Okay. So talk a little bit about your background because the people don't know. They're like, how she get into biometrics and all of that? Talk a little bit about what you currently do. Um, currently, yeah. in my 29th year, um, serving in the Bermuda Police Service, um, that came about, that um, occupation came about, I would say accidentally, uh -huh. but it's been a bittersweet adventure, and I can say an adventure because it was something I stumbled upon after being made redundant mm -hmm. in being in reinsurance mm -hmm. for several years. Um, did I plan to be a police officer? No. Yeah. Do I regret it? No. Okay. Is every day the same? Definitely not. <laughs> Keeps you on your toes. Definitely not. <laughs> but it has gave me unforeseen um, opportunities. Ones I have been definitely blessed. Um, wonderful people that I have been understudied to and mm -hmm. guided and nurtured in. Um, one, of course, where I spent most of my time was in the forensic unit. Okay. Where um, I trained both locally and overseas mm -hmm. to be um, a crime scene um, investigator. Um, so um, in that, that's where I discovered my interest mm -hmm. in fingerprinting. Okay. So going over there, having to study the um, theory and the practical side mm -hmm. of um, forensics and crime scene investigations, one had to learn um, the whole fundamentals of fingerprinting, mm -hmm. breaking down, um, recovering them, what I'm looking for, the certain characteristics of right. them, the value that they carry. Right. You know, so... Because everyone's unique, right? It's not like... From the time... From the time we're born, from the time we're conceived in yeah. our mother's wombs, the characteristics are developed, and they stay with us until our death right. and the decomposition of our bodies. Mm -hmm. So even as identical twins, no two will ever carry. So out of the, over the 8 billion people in this world, mm -hmm. not one of us will ever carry the same fingerprint. Yeah. And I found that extremely fascinating. Yeah. And look at the value that carries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the world knows this, and it increases in value 
as time is going on and the world's recognizing that. So when you decided that you wanted to start your own venture, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so based on your fascination with the whole fingerprinting and mobile um, biometrics, right? Okay. When it, As it relates to crime scenes, how did you determine that there was a need or demand for mobile biometrics, which is what you're trying to, to start up? Um, I think um, as I looked around, because, again, I'd done several years doing forensics. Yeah. And then I transitioned working in a criminal records office do, okay. as a vetting officer. Mm-hmm. So then I was dealing with um, archiving criminal records, people come in to do background checks for various reasons mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I saw that increase in body masses, and especially when we had the America's Cop come here. Yes. And that we were taking in a lot of background checks from all around the world. Right. People coming here for various mm-hmm. reasons mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I started to see, okay, this is really becoming something that the world is even catching on to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, you know, even for as far as security purposes, people coming in and Bermuda is like a hub and we're built on tourism. Yeah, so we, we take are. in yeah. so much diversity. Yeah. So what better way to then start shouldn't we be looking at doing the same thing as how do we build a secure or more um, secure borders right. and infrastructure? So and then even I'm um, so based on, for me as a person, mm-hmm. customer service to me is paramount. So right. I said, how can we go out to cater to people, to make sure that they have a good experience, to gain the knowledge, and to meet them where they're at, mm-hmm. and, and then educate them right. on, and give them quality for service. So I started to research, looking up things, and I found that, okay, what a better way than a person to be able to go to meet a person where they are physically. Right. So that's when the whole thing is I start to research, oh, they do now provide um, equipment Mm -hmm. where I can then go become more mobile, not mm-hmm. have just a fixed Where front. someone has to if come to you, can, right. they can go look up my business, right. see what time's available, book me, book me whether it be for an individual mm-hmm. or book me in a, um, let's say, a boardroom setting mm-hmm. for a team or a group of people, mm-hmm. and then they book that, and I come to meet you on your required time. Okay. So I said, that's convenience, accessibility. What more could you ask for? Yeah. You know, because time. Time is priceless. Yes. So I'm fitting it into your schedule. Mm-hmm. You're not fitting it into mine. And right now, my only competition is really the Bermuda Police Service. Right. Who were, if you wanted that form of service, you, you have, would to, have to go to them, right? You have yeah. to call, make arrangements, and you have to go to South Side. Yeah. And it's done on a very limited and restricted time frame. So tell me the applications, Patrice, because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, who would need this service. So talk about who your potential customer would be. So right now, yeah, the person looking at it would be less people um, primarily seeking visas. Okay. Um, people relocating. Okay. Certain job titles like nurses and staff registering. Mm-hmm. Um, people on specific boards, mm-hmm. let's say um, under certain financial regulations and stuff that sit on boards mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, People going overseas for adoptions and stuff like that mm-hmm, may seek mm-hmm. may need to seek that and um, in particular. Okay. So there is a need mm-hmm. if you're in a certain arena. Mm-hmm. So my hope is to start out at that level. Right. But as I awaken awareness yes. and increase the knowledge in it, I'm hoping demand will come for it. Yeah. Then building up the infrastructure of saying I then want to move deeper into the biometric side of it, saying on the security side. Yes. Then saying looking at, let's say, a business, Mm -hmm. even if not saying the island wants to start regulating, Mm -hmm. but looking at a business by saying, okay, the same way I go apply for a business, and when you go fill out the application, and people do background checks, and part of your process is to say, okay, Jamila, well, part of this process is we're going to have you also fingerprinted, because access to our building requires biometrics to Mm -hmm. go and come as you please, and to certain levels. Right of entry or access to certain maybe restricted areas, Mm -hmm. you need biometrics to get in. And is biometrics just fingerprinting? Or I heard you mention facial recognition too. It it covers any measurement of your personal characteristics. So that means it could be your irises. Mm -hmm. It could be voice recognition, any facial readings, and it it covers a multitude of things. But my initial takeoff on this is going to be fingerprints. And then I want to move on to facial recognition. But I figured if I start off 
both in tours, and then that way you're educating people as you go along, mm -hmm. and then they get the understanding of the value that increases, mm -hmm. then the demand will come with it. I can see you working for the police. Like, <laughs> oh. Let's keep that between you okay, and I right okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's listening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, because really, that's for me, because they do it now and their requirement, I'm like, if you had someone that was providing the service mobily, wouldn't it make their lives easier? I'm thinking, I'm just here to network, help, give back. Yeah. And I'm saying, what better way? I'm coming with the skill set. You already set. have the relationship. Yeah. I'm coming with the skill set, mm -hmm. the expertise, and with my prior. Um, understanding, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. profession, that alone accompanied with what I'm willing to offer with the technology that yeah. I'm um, in with that, what better package can I offer? Makes sense to me. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes, to me, it does not seem like a hard sell, but right. you know, right. so, I don't want to jump the gun. I was just like, that seems like a natural yes. so, first start anyway. Yes. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about this entrepreneurial journey, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm sure it's different than actually, you know, working nine to five or whatever the case may be. So what has been your experience thus far? Well, I'm going to be transparent. Yes, please. I prefer it that way. Um, for me, and I'm speaking as an individual, yes. it's bittersweet mm -hmm. because um, for me, this was, and this this business in particular, um, I have toyed with for, I'm pretty sure, five years. Yeah prior to getting to where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, when it either first hit me, I remember trying to push it off on a co-worker. Like, you know. I we was, should do this. Yeah, yeah. It weren't even we. <laughs> you, you should do You should really do this. <laughs> Listen, this is what I thought of. You should do this. Uh -huh. And I could see, like, she just didn't budge. Like, yeah. she just didn't budge. And then as time went by, you know, and it's, it was just like this nagging thought mm -hmm. I, to be let's say dream or vision that just kept coming and with more profound information and mm -hmm. I researched and more research and then I start writing stuff down. Mm -hmm. Then I started printing stuff off. <laughs> then I went from a few notes to a binder. Right. Then I start asking questions yeah. and stuff. So that's when I started to see it really starting to take shape. Mm -hmm. And then last year I came up into my um, 55th birthday, mm -hmm. so I I had to retire from the Bermuda Police Service. Yeah. Um, and I remember speaking to um, one of my senior managers and saying, listen, and he was part of the Ignite, yeah. unbeknownst to me. He yeah. was part of Ignite, and I spoke to him about this. The, the, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, you really should go trial for Ignite. Uh -huh. I was like, no, no, I'm just having this conversation. Mm -hmm. He said, no, you really sound like you have something. Mm -hmm. And this was the first I think the first time I actually spoke it so to that, someone else, right? right as a person, right, right? So you know, to so, um, for for a lot of reasons because number one, I don't want my business attached to me being a police officer, right? Or policing. Got you. Got it's, you. It's an independent entity, mm -hmm. and it's mine. Yes, I don't want it based on people thinking it's about background check. Yeah, yeah. Because fingerprinting is so much more than that, right? Um. And then the other thing is always that fur of what if. And what if it doesn't work? Or what if it's you know really I mean? an ugly baby? <laughs> <laughs> so when he said it, it was like so, it was encouraging. Yes. It was encouraging. So he said it, and I knew I was um, prepping to go away. I forget even what I was going for. And it was coming up on the end of uh -huh. applications closing for Ignite. And I said, and we were getting, and I actually went home and I started the application on my phone yeah. and it wouldn't go through. And I said, ah, I learned about it. And then I got a bounce back to say, oh, you just got like the two thirds of the way for the yeah, finish it. <sighs> and I said, let me try. I was just packing my last bit of things. Another email punts back said, look, you're almost there. <laughs> we're rooting for you. You're almost there. Yeah. And I looked at it. I said, this can't be for real. Uh -huh. And I pushed it through and then I got congratulations. Yay. So. I was like, well, this is possibly really going to happen. Yeah. So it was those little things then that really said, well, maybe this is possible. But mm -hmm. still in all of that, in the back of my mind, I still sat and dope. Yeah. But I think then when you get in collaborations like Ignite yeah. and BDEC uh -huh. and you sit around like minds. Now, when I say like minds, because I was filled too. 
Not everybody came in with mobile by a magic <laughs> I'm not saying that. When I say like minds, when you come in with people that are carrying their own dreams That's right, and their businesses, own babies. They're their trying own to birth. babies. Yep. And they're all at different levels. Mm -hmm. But you're all feeling like that. <sighs> You're all talking yeah. about it. You're all excited about it. And you feel like you're in a safe space yes. to express yourselves. It's just something that words can't explain that does ignite something in you yeah. to want to push, push forward, forward yeah. and give birth and to happen. this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I will encourage people, but while you're in it, you don't focus on the other people's no. journey. You don't look over and see what everybody else's baby looks like. Mm -hmm. You focus just on yours. Right. Because as happy as I am about all the resources mm -hmm. that Ignite gave me and BDC is still feeding me, mm -hmm. it was overwhelming. Yeah. Because a lot is coming, and, and I'm speaking when I speak, no, primarily to just me, yeah. my individual journey. Yeah. A lot of it I wasn't ready for at yeah, the time. Yeah. So just like a baby, if you're not feeding it in its or, or nurturing it in its in its time frame or in its different segments yeah. of 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 growth, you can harm it, or you can create more damage than mm -hmm. you could. So a lot of stuff was coming at us, like even in BDEC, and at times I felt very overwhelmed mm -hmm. or disjointed yeah, because yeah. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. But now a lot has taken shape. Mm -hmm. And a lot has moved for me, and it's a lot also on my part I can now earn, to, earn up to is because I didn't quite know what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who to go to. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot of the questions to, to ask. ask. Yeah. I didn't know where to apply mm -hmm. some of the stuff that, that you was were learning. given. Yep, that makes sense. So it takes time. It does. And then I find the important part is, but a lot of it comes to making that connection do yeah to know who to ask yeah. and who to share and exchange information with mm -hmm. and i also had to accept just because i may be at this junction to want to exchange yeah. information or when not everybody's at that same junction that's right and a lot of people still are at that oh i don't want to share or i'm afraid if i tell Some somebody's going to steal my idea or somebody's going to do this yeah but my framework always is i draw to I honestly believe, and I be believe this wholeheartedly, it is enough in this world for everyone. It sure is. I don't care if somebody now turns around and opens up another biometric service because my customers will be my customers. And they're not going to do it the way you do it. Thank you. So, <laughs> And what you put out there is what you'll get back. Oh, yes. So I don't operate out of that lane of yeah. fear. Yeah. I operate out of the lane of, and I'm, and I'm working on that too, a failure. Yeah. But I have learned though, in failure you is learn. your greatest lessons learned. That is the truth. Your greatest lessons learned. So that's something I'm still trying to overcome. Yeah. But I do know that that's where your greatest lessons come from. If you gotta learn to open up, you gotta right. learn to ask questions. It's true. And I always and I know it's a biblical thing, but always remain a student. Yeah. Always remain a student. Yeah. And I think with that mindset um, you can move through life a little bit easier because when it, to me, when you get to the point where you think, you know, all the things that's when it starts getting rough because you're like, you, there's impossible for you to know all the things. Right. And I think you then close yourself off yes. to receive. That's right. Because I, and at the stage where I am now at mm -hmm. 56, I'm just learning that I've always been at this pl a place, and it's, again, this one thing that I have learned a lot mm -hmm. in this journey is personal growth yeah. and reflection. Yeah. And I've always put myself in a place of being less than, mm -hmm. always feeling that everybody else has so much more to give me, mm -hmm. everybody else has so much more to offer in life that I'm always on the lesser than space. Mm. But that's from my personal journey, yeah. stuff I've had to encounter in yeah. life and being aware of that. Mm -hmm. But I've learned that life is definitely being about even exchange. Yes. So, and I say that because of the job and the role I play now in the Bermuda Police Service. Currently, I sit as the domestic violence mm -hmm. officer. Mm -hmm. And even though most of my role is my clients, are, most people are sitting in some form of abuse. Mm -hmm. And my aim is always try to leave their feeling a bit better, some way, somehow, right. than when I initially called. But surprising enough, no matter how broken, how devastated most of 
my victims may be, mm -hmm. or my clients, because I don't like to refer to them as victims, mm -hmm. I always feel encouraged some way or some, mm -hmm. no matter what way we exchange information. Right, right. I tend to get encouraged yeah. from them. Because it's like you said, home. it's give and take. You, yes. You're feeding into someone, they're yes. feeding into yes. you. So, you know, and I feel as long as, and it's always about your perspective, mm -hmm. no matter how bad something is. Yeah. Tell yourself you're going through this for a reason. Yeah. That's life lessons. Mm -hmm. If everything was always good, would we really learn anything? No, we wouldn't. Would we really learn anything? No, no we wouldn't. We if wouldn't. we really stopped back and looked, no matter how hard we had to work for that A in our mm -hmm, class mm -hmm, and study, mm -hmm. you know, how yeah, that relationship was, would we really learn anything? Yeah, no. if we hadn't gone through that no. process. No. So you mentioned, you mentioned Ignite, and so you went through that program. It was great. Mm -hmm. What was... What did what was your catalyst to get you to pl apply to our program, Enterprise Bermuda? Like, what did you think once you finished it? Ignite, yeah. Ignite done exactly what its title said. It ignited me. Right. It it gave me the confidence to know that you're on this to either that yeah. I had. There are great possibilities. Yes. And I think what I initially took because I went in skeptical. Yeah. Then through the nurturing and stuff like that, build community and stuff, and I saw the possibilities. Yeah. But I think what Sean and Laura was trying to get me to see on my own without giving it to me yeah. was that I wasn't dreaming big enough. Hmm. I wasn't dreaming big enough. Yes. And I remember saying one time, you know how, and I'm going back, I always have to do these analogies. Yes. You know how you can be pregnant, you go to the doctor and he says, oh, wow, you know, you're pregnant. So you're in your first trimester and then you go back and the doctor says, by the way, and you're pregnant with two children. Oh. No, you're just about prepared for one. Right. No, now you got to get your mind. Two. Yeah, yeah. So I say that to say, I think I went into pregnant with one either. Mm. And as I started to research, as I started to share what I'm finding mm -hmm, out and mm -hmm. stuff, and I'm sharing it now with these mentors, they're not saying, mm, I wonder if she realizes. I wonder if she realizes that I'm saying, but I think I'm giving birth to more than one. Right. And they're saying, mm. Yeah. And then I'm saying, then they're saying other things. And now I'm saying, no, first setting in me. Yeah. And, stuff, and I'm saying, and then the more research I'm doing, I'm saying, ooh. And then I'm trying to say, instead of me focusing and staying grounded on where I want to start, meaning just with the fingerprints, yeah. I'm trying to suck it all in. Yeah. And I'm realizing that it's still stuff I still need to learn myself mm -hmm. about this whole concept, even mm -hmm. even in depth, like where technology is good. Yes, I exactly. Start. Yeah. But then I'm trying, because then we've got things like even in, Ignite now yeah. coming to BDC oh, about pitch. So I'm now saying, oh, I'm going to learn about this. I'm going to learn about that. So now so I'm confusing think, myself yeah. now. And I'm saying. So it's industry specific, but then it's just general business information that you need I'm, to understand. Now I'm operating yeah. out of fear because I'm saying, I don't know enough. I don't yeah. know enough. I don't know enough. Yeah. Instead of trusting and saying, but you know enough to get started. Yes. So at least get started. No one knows everything, mm -hmm. but through trial and error mm -hmm. and putting it out there and getting invested, you start to grow in it. And that's what life's about. You're supposed to grow mm -hmm. and grow mm -hmm. in life, period. Mm -hmm. And that's through trial and error and mm -hmm. being in it. So um, I think once I finished that and then I said, I still need some, some more mm -hmm. tools and some more resources mm -hmm. and stuff. So then researching and then... Um, Ray Lambert had come and spoke yeah. at Ignite, and he was talking about the program mm -hmm. and stuff, and he was talking about the resources. And mm -hmm. talk about, I said, and at first I was like, do I want to go do another course, or don't I want to go do another course? And I kept saying, but you know you don't know enough to get what you need, so <laughs> you better put your big girl panties on and be realistic <laughs> yeah. and stop being foolish yeah. and go seek the help you may need. Yeah. So BDC seemed to have everything lined up mm -hmm. that I may have been needed. Yeah. So I said, what do I have to lose? Right. The help is there. Yeah. So again, I took the chance, mm -hmm. applied, and again, very grateful, was given the opportunity to come here. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful. And I will say, out of the combined mm -hmm. efforts of BDC and Ignite, the one thing I will say that is priceless is the community and yeah. the collaborations and the relationships yeah. you build. No amount of time mm -hmm. invested or money or any, that all is replaced. But the relationships you build, yeah. the connections, mm -hmm. those are what become priceless. Yeah. 
yeah. to, to And I would agree. I think every time I ask that question, I think that the, the answer is the same because it can be hard. Like you mentioned, you know, you're coming up with these ideas. You're afraid. You don't want it to fail. And sometimes it feels like you're the only one going through it. But having that community, even though it's completely separate business, yep. they're experiencing some of the same yep. things. And sometimes you just need to let it out. Let somebody else know. And for people to be like, yes, I get it. I but the dynamics of it that people don't really see. Yeah. Because what people are getting, even when you're sure, they're just getting glimpses yes, of stuff. That's and everybody's right. at the in different stages level and, and stages yes. of business. And that's what it is. When you come into these um, different programs, mm -hmm. some people have had businesses for two years. Some people are just at the ideology, like me. Yes. Some people are just about to give birth or yeah. have just given birth to their businesses. Yeah. So if people saying, like, um, oh, I've now been in my business for two years. This is what I've done. This is what I could have done differently. But this, and so they're exchanging nuggets. So they've did it. So they can then hand this Share some, to that's you right. And then make a difference to you mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's not discount these little nuggets that we can do even amongst ourselves outside of the additional support yes. and mentorships that's that right. are offered her. That's right. Because those are the things that people don't get to see mm -hmm. that, you know, I would encourage people that to take advantage of those things. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about it, even, okay, well, should I, shouldn't I not? Because one thing, COVID has gotten a, and I'm not saying it wasn't a bad thing, but COVID has gotten a bad you know, bash all around, right. you know, for all of the stuff that came out of it, the restrictions that came out of it. But let's look at the upside of right. it. People that didn't know they were going to be millionaires are millionaires. Mm -hmm. People that didn't know that they were going to be self-made business people, they are self-made business people and millionaires. Out of necessity, and right? people that may have looked and said, oh, this is not going to be a business, or this was a stupid business. No business idea is a stupid idea mm -hmm. at, the, at this day. Or you may do something because it's innate to you, mm -hmm. but... That will be a money maker to someone else. Mm -hmm. So I just say, if you got a thought, at least write it down. Yeah. If that thought's still plugging at you and you can still add to it, that means it may have some value to it. So continue, do some research. Mm -hmm. Trust somebody enough to ask a question. Like if you have that true friend that's going to tell you if it's good, bad, or indifferent. Or if that if if. If the friend is not there, then there are resources, like yes, you said, where yes. you can come and somebody will tell you. We had the conversation early on before we started uh, talking on, on camera about the baby and some, <laughs> somebody yes. telling your baby's ugly I and mean, maybe maybe you don't want to hear it. But sometimes that is the thing that you need to hear. Um, and, and it's okay if you go in with an initial idea and then based on your research and speaking to people, that idea changes into something else. It's fine. But honesty to me is yeah. so rare. It's a rare commodity nowadays yeah. because people rely so much on social media mm -hmm. and what you're being fed and stuff like that. So I find that if you've got a friend, relative, or employer that you have casual conversation with that you know that you trust their, you value their opinion. Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid to have a candid conversation with them. Yeah. And and if and trust me, trust me, everybody's not gonna understand your business either. No, they will not. Family alike and stuff like that. They'd be like, yeah. You're not mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Because when I tell people and my family especially and yeah. close friends that, oh, I'm interested in starting my own business. Now, very few people I've even shared with what my business is. Yes. The first thing out of everybody's mouth, oh, is it going to be in in style? and Because and you're f fabulous. I'm like I'll, 56 I'll take and that. fabulous. I'll okay. take that. But Always like, on point. No. Like, <laughs> no. No. And it, it may be seen fine. And, but then that also speaks to what I say. Some things are just innate in people. Yes. That, that may be just second nature to you. Yes. And that may be something maybe you need to look at as a business. Mm -hmm. Because what we take for granted as speaking, engaging, yes. or that. Some people struggle. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? So don't discount that. But at the same sense, like, yeah, I may not talk about, oh, you know, biometrics and fingerprinting and stuff like that. But that stuff fascinates me. Yes. That really fascinates me. Right. Like, and, and I think it comes down to primarily because of the detail that it requires. Mm -hmm. Like, 
in, in, in it and its uniqueness to each individual. Right. And I think if I, and I start to really think about why, why am I drawn to that? Mm -hmm. And I think because as a young child, not having my parents around mm -hmm. and being adopted mm -hmm. and stuff, I had to grow up watching others mm -hmm. and picking up traits from others mm -hmm. that I admired to adapt to, to develop. Right. So I think that, and I still do that today, yeah. just watching people or admiring people at a distance mm -hmm. and formulating it or tailor-making it mm -hmm. to what's what going to suit me. Okay. So when you really go back and you're honest to yourself and you look at mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. your mannerisms, why you're the way you are and stuff like that. And I often say even to my children, like my daughter first highlighted this to me. Like I used to go watch her play football and uh -huh. stuff and I'll be cheering her on and stuff and she'll come on the side as a toddler. Stop calling my name. <laughs> Please stop calling my name. <laughs> but I'm cheering for you. Right. Man. All I do is hear you. Oh. I'm cheering for you. You sound angry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not my intent. Right, right. But I think it came down to the fact that I just still was carrying a lot of anger right. from whatever I had dealt with. Uh, okay. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but yeah. It was not, to me, I was thinking that I was just this loving parent out here cheering for my child and proud that, oh, yes, look at what you're doing. Yeah. She's like, just, just stand here. You do not need to call my name. As a toddler. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> out of the mouths of babes, they'll tell you the truth. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Patrice, listen, I feel like this conversation was a bit therapeutic. Like you said, all the things. I had all these questions I was going to ask you, but I think through our conversation, you have shared a lot of the challenges that happen as an entrepreneur. You have shared how you problem solve. You have shared the need to form this community of, of people who can support you and help push you where you need to be. And even from the idea of, of, of taking that first step, you know what I mean? To do something yeah. that's com like, it's not here in Bermuda. We don't, we don't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, in so many ways, you can you can get discouraged because you're like, well, it's not here. There may not be a demand for it, but your passion is, shines through. You know what I mean? And so I'm confident that this thing, it's going to happen. So okay. for you, I, before we wrap up, because I told you it was going to go fast, right? <laughs> before we wrap up, I would love to hear, like, what is your estimated time of arrival? It, when is this going to come to fruition? Um, and, and what is your next step, I would say? My ultimate goal? Yeah. I've said it. But before yours, in my business, I need to be started. Okay. Equipment in, up and running. Yes. Up and running. That is my ultimate goal. By rights, I would have liked to have happened last year. Yeah. Life happens, and I'm not a believer of things, things failed are, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. I believe everything is purpose led. Yeah. So this is my year. I flew out earlier this month to go look at equipment, yes. looking at vendors and stuff. It was great to, and that little additional flame mm -hmm, under me mm -hmm. to s literally see equipment, touch yeah. equipment, interact with people that deal with this stuff. So that's my goal to okay. have this started, to be up and rolling because as you can see, the airport soon will be rolling out mm -hmm. with um, their form of biometric soon. So I would like to be a part. I want to be a part of this train, um, change and trend in this innovative change that's coming about because Bermuda, whether you want to be a part of it or not, it's, it's coming. coming. <laughs> and I'm going to be a part of yes, that Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are. to be me. Okay. So, yeah. So, and I'm not um, ignorant to think that, yes, it's been a wonderful journey with the Bermuda Police Fire yeah. Service. I'm now, next year will be 30 years there, but last year I did celebrate my 55th. Um, so, each year I've taken on a yearly contract. Yeah. So, I'm not naive to think that it's guaranteed yeah. that I'll get another one. Yeah. So, I'm preparing yes. for my future. And mm -hmm. I want to be a part of navigating that. I don't want to be dictated to me. Yes. I want to be a part like of that. navigating that. Yes. You know, for once be in control of my destiny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm excited. And I'm going to say part of the excitement is also fur-based. And I have no problem in saying that because I feel that if you have some form of fur in your life, you exercise caution in it. Yeah. And then you prepare for what can be the inevitable. That's right. And that way we stay alert. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am right now. So I'm excited about I'm excited it. For you yes. I'm excited for you too. Yes. I can't wait. Yes. Um, listen, you have to, once it's launched, you got to come back. So you got to give us an update and, and let us know girl, where you are. Girl. 
Um, but I am so thrilled uh, that you were part of our program. I'm so thrilled yes. that whatever way we assisted, that we were able to do that. And just because the program is coming to an end does not mean that our relationship will end. Um, we like to, we try to think we're holistic. So at the idea, the mid phase, the growth phase. Um, and so there are going to be some great opportunities coming up for you, I think, especially because you're a program participant. So we're excited to see how that can help you get to your next journey. And I believe, and I believe everything, like I said, is purpose layered. Yeah. Purpose layered. And on one closing, I would just encourage anybody, male, female, you have an either. I would say, looking back over my life, if one thing I could change, don't take yourself so serious. Mm. Take risk. Take risk. I mean, not at your detriment, of course, <laughs> but take risk. Learn what you can from people around you. Yeah. Because... People leave for whatever reason, whether it mean time, expiring in life, or moving on. Mm -hmm. So learn what you can by them. I was fortunate to have people that saw greater things in me that I saw in myself, yeah. that whether I wanted to receive or not, they were willing to give. Mm -hmm. And maybe I didn't know the value at the time, but I appreciate it now. So I'm telling you, while you're in positions, whether you're enjoying the space you're in, not enjoying your job or whatever, take the opportunity to learn something. Yes. Learn what you can, because you just don't know where it's going to benefit you later in life so never sit there and think oh no i don't know why i've been there done all of that all of that what i that? wasn't supposed to be in police for this long <laughs> but here you are later, still her yeah still and her and, and grateful though. Yes. and grateful yes. and grateful i love that and grateful well listen we minded a whole lot of business today <laughs> <laughs> mine's yours and everybody listen, else's. Listen. <laughs> and i say look if you don't mind your business who will and that's the bottom line. It's really up to you. So thank you. Thank you for thank being you, here with thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for tuning in to Mind Your Business with me, your host, Jamila Lodge. Tune in next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. Because if you don't mind your business, who will? Mind Your Business is brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda Business starts here.